listen to this track. Look in my eyes, I will never desert you. Oh. <laughs> I'm all the way up. Your DJ has only just begun. What is going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Tuning In with your host, David Rowan. Let's get right to it. This past Sunday was the 52nd annual American Country Music Awards, or the ACMs for short. Big talent showed up. New talent was introduced. Let's talk about the nominees and the winners. First off, we have the new male vocalist of the year. The nominations were Kane Brown, Chris Jansen, Chris Lane, John Party, and Brett Young. I've listened to some of these uh, artists' music. Um, I listened to Kane Brown mostly, uh, John Party as well, and the winner of that award was John Party. And I have to say congratulations to him. I loved his um, song uh, "Dirt on My Boots." It's a good party song. It's it's catchy. It's upbeat. Um, I think he deserves this award. Kane Brown was okay. He put in a he released a uh, an EP, I believe, or his debut album last uh, winter. Uh, I've listened to some of the other artists' music. They're okay. I think John Party had uh, had this one in the back though. New female vocalist of the year. We have Lauren Elena Cam. Brandy Clark and Marin Morris and the winner of that award was Marin Morris and I have to hand it to her props to her man I mean she had made great music she performed with Alicia Keys at the Grammys she even uh, received a Grammy for um, I believe it was a new up and coming artist and wow she has an incredible voice and she she really digs into her roots about um, about her faith her family, her friends, her passion for the music, and I am a big fan of her music. She is the bomb, and I don't—I rarely say that, but she's she's really great. Um, next up, we've got Vocal Group of the Year, and the nominees were Eli Young Band, Little Big Town, Old Dominion, Rascal Flats, and Lady Antebellum, and the winner of that award was Little Big Town. Uh, I've I've never I haven't heard of Eli Young Band. Um, the rest of the bands were um, I've listened to some of their music. Lady Antebellum, I re- I really like their music. I know that they uh, took a bit of a break to try and see about their uh, solo careers, and they also had kids. But now they came back, and I think they were making new music. Rascal Flatts. Eyes, <laughs> they are old, and I'm, I don't mean age-wise. I mean they're an old band. I've listened to them when I was a little kid, and it's, I'm surprised that they're still uh, nominated for any awards. To be honest, I mean they haven't really put out um, big uh, music or catchy music that everyone's been listening to. Little Big Town, however, they also performed at the Grammys. They even uh, participated in the uh, Greece, no, I wouldn't say Greece. It's it's BG's performance, and I believed, I don't know, if they sang Greece or they sang. Um, I think it was "How Deep Was Your Love." I think that's what they sang. It was a tribute to the BG's, um, the this past Grammys, and they killed it. Um, I do like their music um, a little bit, but I don't listen to it quite often. But I know that the lead singer had made music with Luke Bryan in the past. But props to them for this award, man. Gotta give it up to them. Vocal Duo of the Year. The nominees were Big and Rich, Brothers Osborne, Dan and Shay, Florida Georgia Line, and Maddie and Tay. And the winner of that award was Brothers Osborne. 
I really, <laughs> I really wanted Florida Georgia Line to win this one. I mean, they released their album Dig Your Roots this past August, I really want to say, and they are by far my favorite country band. Uh, Maddie and Tay, they're both female uh, vocal artists. I know they've started re- they started producing music, I think, uh, for a couple of years now. I want to say they started in, in 2015 or 2014. Brothers Osborne, they released their EP, and they had a debut album last January of 2016. Dan and Shay have been uh, making music. They also performed with, with Nick Jonas at a time, and they also uh, they opened up for uh, Blake Shelton. But I'm I was surprised that Brothers Osborne won this uh, award. I really I really wanted Florida Georgia Line to win this. I mean they're they're on tour right now. They have a uh, they've got you know selling concert tickets like crazy i know that they're coming to indiana soon i think it's this summer i don't know if it's in may or june and uh i they're my favorite band and i really wanted them to win this award i just brothers osborne they they have a good few singles that i like but i was disappointed i was i mean congratulations to the brothers osborne but i really wanted florida georgia line to win this one so, next up, we have Male Vocalist of the Year. And then the winner of that was Thomas Rhett. And I think uh, Keith Urban and Luke Bryan and I believe Jason Aldean were also the nominees. And Thomas Rhett, man, he deserves this award. I know that he's got a baby on the way, and he's put out a good... A good album, a good solid foundation. Uh, Die a Happy Man is probably his best piece he's ever written and performed. I know that was a tribute to his wife. And not only that, he also won uh, the song of the year, which was Die a Happy Man. And I think I think that was the particular song that stuck out with everyone throughout the entire year. And he deserves this award. And I gotta give I gotta give props to him. Um, he did a fantastic job. I think I think he's um, he's touring right now, and I think Marin Morris is opening up for him. So congratulations, Miranda Lambert wins Female Vocalist of the Year, and not not only that, eight uh, eight consecutive years in a row, and uh, I, I think. I really wanted um I really wanted another female artist to win this. I'm not going to, you know, say names or point fingers, but uh, Carrie Underwood, she uh I think in my book Carrie Underwood deserved this award. I mean, I'm I'm not a huge fan of Miranda Lambert. She's all right. Um I know that with her and after what happened with her and Blake Shelton, I think her latest album kind of um, inspired her, you know, for, you know, for the creation of the album, and it's just, God, I don't know, man, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of Miranda Lambert, I really wanted Carrie Underwood to win, uh, let's, uh, let's take a moment right here to talk about, uh, who performed at the awards, so, up first, apparently they are the new, uh, vocal duo, you know, dream team here and it's Keith Urban and Carrie Underwood I wouldn't really say that they're like the dream team I feel like she and Brad Paisley make the better uh couple and um because I don't understand why they would name them this uh this name I mean they've I know she's performed with Brad Paisley for a few times and she's open she's even opened up awards with him so I I think that would have made better sense if she performed with Brad Paisley, but I know uh, Keith Urban had released a new album, and he even received nominations for the ACMs. So I think it was, uh, I think this is a, a good pairing, but I wouldn't call them like the dream team. I would say she and Brad Paisley would make the better duo. 
Uh, Kelsey Ballerini also performed, and I wish, and she was she was nominated uh, for a Grammy. I think it was also like new artist, and wow, I am a big fan of her. I think her most emotional piece was probably Peter Pan. And I really wanted her to win an award for the ACMs. I think she was also in line next to Mar- Marin Morris for the female vocalist. And, you know, either one of them could have won. I would have been happy. But I think I listened to more of Kelsey Ballerini than Marin Morris. Even though Marin Morris has a powerful voice, I can only recognize two of her pieces. And I can recognize Kelsey Ballerini's entire album. Up next... Faith Hill and Tim McGraw performed again. They're back. And I know they've made music for the new movie that's been uh, uh, released this year, The Shack. And they've they've both written and performed deep emotional pieces. Maybe not just that. I think that's also, maybe you can tie a little bit of religion into it. And I'm not going to go deep into that, but I, I feel like they've brought elements into their music that you know, it, it sounds traditional country music. Thomas Rhett performed with Mary Morris at the ACMs, and they absolutely killed it. If I can get tickets to their concert, oh my gosh. I think, that, you know, they both crushed it. Uh, I can I can see good things coming from Mary Morris, and I know that Thomas Rhett deserves the recognition. So, up next, the Backstreet Boys are back. Yes, and they performed with Florida Georgia Line. They uh, they also debuted in Florida Georgia Line's album "God, Your Mama and Me." And I'm I really love Florida Georgia Line's album, and I would never guess that the Backstreet Boys would pair up with Florida Georgia Line. I know that um, Florida Georgia Line, since one of their influences, one of their inspirations was Backstreet Boys, and I find that a little bit I find that a little bit um different in a sense but wow i think i'm gonna give this performance the top of the acms of that night the best performance ever the the hype was there everyone was it was like a good reunion especially with the backstreet boys and i just i really enjoyed that one on back with some of the awards jason aldean wins entertainer of the year (laughs) oh my gosh i just uh i'm I'm sorry for the people who love jason aldean but i'm not i like some of his work i like um a couple of his songs that he's written in the past i know that he's performed one with uh, kelly clarkson and i think that was my favorite piece and i believe that piece was nominated for a grammy but some of the other uh, some of the other nominees here: Luke Bryan, Florida Georgia Line, Carrie Underwood, and Keith Urban. Again, I wanted Florida Georgia Line to win. Like I'm not a huge fan of Jason Aldean, and I'm probably gonna get mobbed after I say this. But I'm not a huge fan of Luke Bryan. I like some of his work. I like the uh, the song that he collaborated with Florida Georgia Line. This is how we roll. But it's just overall, it's Carrie Underwood. She's good. I think I think she deserves some of the awards that she's been nominated for, like um, uh, Female Vocalist of the Year. Keith Urban's all right. I like some of his previous work, and but by far, I really wanted Florida Georgia Line to win. I don't, I don't understand why Jason Aldean won this award. I know that he's made, I believe, new music recently. And it's just, I don't know. I, 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 I really wanted, again, I really wanted Florida Georgia Line to win this one. Now, the last major award that I want to talk about is Album of the Year Award. I think this is one of the most anticipated um, awards to receive. I think this is like one of the most important after being uh, the male vocalist, female vocalist, and song of the year. I think album of the year is one of like the top five awards to receive and the nominees were black by dirks bentley dig your roots by florida georgia line hero by Marin morris ripcord from keith urban 
and the weight of these wings by Miranda Lambert. And the winner of that award is Miranda Lambert. And I just, uh, <laughs> uh, this is the last time I'm going to preach about Florida Georgia Line. I really wanted them to win. I think, I think the, the foundation of Florida Georgia Line's new album is it's all about their wives. It's all about um, having a new life with their spouses and building a future and seeing where it takes them. But it also they also bring good summer um, party kind of music. I wouldn't say party hard music. I'd say more like a, you know like a cruising down the beach, you know, party in the sand kind of music. Still, uh, Marin Morris, uh, her album Hero. She's she's all right. I haven't listened to her entire album. Again, I only listened to a couple of her pieces, but I like. Uh, Dirk's Bentley music, and if I know he, uh, I believe he also co-hosted with um, Luke Bryan, I believe, from the ACMs, and I'm I'm a huge fan of him. But uh, Keith Urban's Ripcord, I know that he's had memorable couple pieces in his album, uh, but I I haven't listened to the entire thing. Keith Urban's okay in my books, but for the last time, I really wanted Florida Georgia Line. To win. I just, I don't understand why Miranda Lambert's albums won. If anyone else can tell me, please, by all means. Um, but I know that she's, I think her message was that she's trying to um, send a, a strong, empowering message uh, through her album. And I know that she's raised up women everywhere. So... She, she'd be a good inspiration for other women out there. Or actually for anyone out there, to be honest. Um, I think that's that's the only good side that I can talk about her album. But I'm such a Florida, I'm such a big fan of Florida Georgia Line. I mean, even get this. Chainsmokers' new album came out uh, today. And guess who's on the album? Florida Georgia Line. And I'm thinking, hold up. How did this even happen? And um, they were they they were interviewed, and someone asked them like who they wanted to collaborate, and they were thinking, you know what, Chain Snowkers is not a bad idea. And then next day they had a call, had a I think it was like a next day or a couple days later they had a call to collaborate with the Chain Smokers. It was like a last minute thing. So uh, they. Uh, they uh they recorded the last they recorded a couple days and they stayed up all night trying to you know make it perfect and it was it's the last track on the Chainsmokers album uh you can still jam your freaking face off to it um it's a positive song and it's also emotional at the same time and i would never expect a country band and it's it doesn't even sound country but that's i'm not complaining about that you can still recognize their vocals. It's not country. It's it's still a, a dance jam party song, but with a with a hint of Florida Georgia Line in it. So props to them for their collaboration with the Chainsmokers. I feel like that's going to be one of the um, the new party songs of the summer, probably let alone the year, because Chainsmokers can bring the house down. And I, I really like this piece. It, they, they push their vocals to a new level. I've never heard anything like this from them before. And I know they collaborated with Nelly on his previous album. And that's, that didn't even sound really a bit country. You know, it's got, it's got the Nelly vibe to it with, you know, Florida Georgia Line vocals. But this one, I, have n- I would never expect something like this from them before. And the, I gotta give props to them. And I, I like the song. I enjoy it. It's great. It's called uh, Last Day Alive. And it's, wow, it's mind blowing. It's just, it's unexpected. It's unique. It's a positive, different type of song. And I feel if, you know, if you're a country fan and you like Florida Georgia Line, check out this song, man. I mean, I think you're gonna really enjoy it. That wraps up this episode of Tuning In. 
Thank you all so much. Please support the Campus Citizen. Check out other amazing content. I'll see you all next time. Okay. You ever love somebody so much you can barely breathe when you're with them? You meet and neither one of you even know what hit them. She would always pick me up when I break down. I knew her secrets. We both from the same town. I can feel it, baby.